Cloud as a service provider looks very attractive, but it does not come for free. There is a cost of security associated with it. Over the last decade, cloud security has seen a lot of research going into it. Some very interesting artifacts came out as a consequence, which helped the cloud infrastructure to become more trustworthy. So this is, as we speak, uh, an evergreen researchable area. At the same time, uh, it has a lot of uh, um, money and business associ associated with it. So uh, because of the paucity of time, we are just going to look at some uh, important aspects of it. So we'd start off with the dimensions, have a quick look at the user concerns and a quick fix in the form of isolation. So why cloud security would appear as, as an issue? The reason is cloud computing systems actually span across boundaries of uh, multiple organizations, even cross the security borders of various nation states, uh, each having its own uh, national security policy and national cybersecurity policy. So it is, it's not easy to determine uh, uh, who is to be blamed, uh, known as the five W's of uh, forensic investigation. You can look it up uh, yourselves. Uh, when something un un unpleasant uh, uh, happens. So the cloud security dimensions cannot be restricted to these uh, 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 bullets only, uh, but for the sake of brevity, let's look at the dimensions. For instance, we need to look at the risks. Risks give rise to the threats. The fundamental difference between threat and risk is when uh, we have a risk which is internal or intrinsic to a system, it remains a risk. But once we have an intruder, um, someone who is looking uh, at capitalizing or encashing such a risk, it becomes a threat. So threat is hosti hostile presence plus the risks. Then we have the operating systems. Uh, security has very important dimension because after all, it is the OS which runs the entire computing infrastructure. Then the virtual machine uh, security. Uh, the virtual machine security literally is the, the, the infrastructure on which the virtual machines are going to run. And the virtualization process itself could pose some uh, security um, challenges. Then uh, the shared images, the OS images, which are uh, consistently um, spread across multi-tenants in, in virtualized environments, um, is a risk because uh, one size fits all is easy for deployment, but it gives room to uh, some zero-day zero vulnerabilities and some common threats uh, which could be applicable to all the tenants. Then uh, the operating system which is used by the management service provider or the management services like uh, NOC, the Network Operation Center, uh, sometimes known as the ONM Operations and Management, and uh, the equally the SOC, the Security Operation Center. So what exact tools or what exact operating systems are they using is, is another um, element in the end-to-end -end, um, concern. Now, the NIST cloud reference model, again, contains uh, the essential components uh, which have to be addressed. So we see we have the auditor as, 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 as an entity which is going to oversee uh, the security vulnerabilities, risk assessment, risk mitigation, and recommendations uh, for the service providers and the, uh, the, the partners, the CSNs. So we see we have an auditor that is going to carry out the security audit and the privacy impact audit because the privacy is, is the first thing that gets compromised 
once you publish your data on the cloud. Uh, since a tighter security means a lesser attention to, uh, 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 to the performance, so there's a trade-off. The auditor has to ensure that the security vulnerabilities have to be mitigated while maintaining a bare minimum performance. From the user perspective, that is, uh, I'll say, a very uh, self-centered viewpoint, um, which, which, which is everyone's right. Uh, the user concerns are the uh, loss of control and ownership of data as soon as you uh, put your data or upload, upload your data on the cloud. The data integrity, if it's going to remain the same. The privacy enforcement, if no one else is allowed to view it, if it is encrypted strong enough. And uh, once a, a, a subscriber or a user, CSU, uh, gets a service and uh, after provisioning the service, it, it, it wants to deprovision the service, uh, the reminiscence of data becomes a concern because uh, after all, uh, whatever storage took place, someone else could make further copies of it. Uh, it has to be uh, taken care of. Then, um, in the presence of uh, multiple tenants on the same physical machine, uh, how data isolation would be um, ensured is, is, a, is a serious concern. Then, as a, as a national concern, sometimes um, the, the governments want the, their, the data related to their citizens uh, to be um, restricted uh, to certain geographical prox proximity or locality. Uh, this is something uh, which, which is not possible to be implemented uh, if it's not uh, uh, taken care of particularly. Then the, the, the virtual machine running environment, the hypervisor itself is, uh, uh, is, is vulnerable. Uh, so uh, uh, then we have the data integrity protection audit agency. So the auditing data uh, has to be uh, the, the entity that carries out um, uh, integrity uh, audit has to be made sure that it, it's also uh, free from vulnerability. Then the subscribers which are adopting certain policies through provi provider provided controls, uh, what uh, is the trust level or what is the uh, trustworthiness of uh, uh, those policies. Uh, the policies come in as uh, as uh, installable packages, so it means that uh, the verification of these is also a user concern. Probably not from the uh, cloud service provider as such, from a third party. Then the certification, accreditation, endorsement for a certain cloud service, uh, like the three star, four star, or five star rating, is again a user concern. Uh, let's quickly look at the uh, existing uh, threats which amplify and the emergent threats because of the unique uh, um, uh, constructs of uh, the, the cloud environment. So the traditional threats simply amplify because the infrastructure becomes uh, highly uh, diverse, uh, distributed uh, beyond the uh, geographical control and user uh, control and a lot of other users sharing the same space. Uh, the, bo the boundaries between uh, what control does the provider have on your data uh, and the users themselves uh, is, is becoming hazy. The new threats which are specific to uh, um, uh, cloud environment is the multi-tenancy that is uh, running the virtual machine manager uh, itself and the, uh, and the uh, uh, new attack channels that are created because uh, we have yet another um, uh, Achilles heel now in the um, kill chain. Uh, the AAA procedure, which was centralized now is, 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 is distributed. So uh, it means that uh, uh, the application of uh, AAA, which is applicable to an, in, an individual should not be implementable on another individual as such, and uh, not at all to an organization. So it means that uh, the organization now needs uh, a package or uh, a thorough 
ट्रिपल ए इश्योरेंस फॉर फॉर ऑल दी इंडिविजुअल्स विद इन दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन विच आर रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय अ सिंगल नेम ऑफ दैट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन देन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ द ओवर द टॉप सर्विसेज लाइक व्हाट्सएप एंड द लाइक हैव देर ओन proprietary mechanisms which are running on top of cloud services so there is a lack of transparency and uh, less control of uh, the cloud service providers let alone um, the users uh, now let's look at the uh, threat surface from the user uh, service and the cloud infrastructure viewpoint these three entities are actually vulnerable from each other so we say that everyone may attack everyone else so we see here that if you look at user a user is vulnerable uh, from the service which it invokes and the cloud infrastructure that it gets services from at the same time a user is also vulnerable from another tenant that resides or uses the same cloud infrastructure now the service in a quid pro quo or tit for tat basis is also vulnerable from the user itself because the user is also present here with its own api so the service uh, could be uh, under attack from the user itself or from the cloud infrastructure now the cloud infrastructure once it goes rogue is the biggest threat that the users and the services could be exposed to and then the cloud infrastructure is also vulnerable uh, to the user and to the service that the user invokes now this material has been actually taken from uh, from from a reference book i'm going to share it uh, with you uh, towards the end uh, this material uh, Uh, was presented in a conference back in 2013 and a book was published back then now it has been formally republished um, in 2022 so we were talking about all these vulnerabilities so could we think about a very simple and uh, basic uh, mechanism to combat uh, these security vulnerabilities the most obvious answer is isolation what is isolation we know that in cloud uh the virtual machine managers ensure that each user gets to have its own services in the form whatever iaas saas pwas nwas whatever now the runtime behavior of an application which is running for the user is actually affected by the uh, applications which are running concurrently for other users so the security vulnerabilities for the virtual machines and the virtual machine manager could be significantly reduced if uh, the number of exposed uh, services uh, and the control knobs for a certain virtual machine manager are limited to a few functions only um because the more are the functions which are exposed by the virtual machine manager for a user it means that we are giving more control to a user to probably wage some kind of attack particularly in the privileged mode so this is uh, i'll say a quick fix to the concerns that we've seen um earlier the book which i was referring to is uh, cloud computing theory and practice by marinesco it was published initially in 2013 which he presented at a conference uh, it was republished in 2022 by morgan kaufman uh, 